So, Palantir has just been busting through everyone's expectation. I mean, it doesn't matter what the rest of the market is doing, it just keeps running, giving us an over 80% return on the last years that we bought for $20 back in May, which is just ridiculous in a four month span. But we have our first crack starting to form, so let's talk about that, talk about what Wall Street's saying about Palantir, and if this run can continue or not. Just make sure you like the video if you like getting the truth out the hype, because that's exactly what you're going to get today, guys. All right, so I don't think any of us are arguing here. Palantir has been on an epic run. Obviously, we're having a lot of fun with it, especially if you were buying. You had a chance to buy in the 20s this year, low 20s this year. And obviously, we've had a max run up here, and we're approaching $40 now per share. And also, don't forget that you can take advantage of the September stretch sale if you wanted to see all those buy alerts, like my last buy in Palantir at $20.79 or so and a whole bunch more. We'll talk more about it at the end, but that sale is only going on for a week, so make sure you check out the pinned comment down there. But let's jump into this video here and see exactly what Wall Street's having to say, and then I'll give you my take on if this run can continue or not. Because we do have some cracks forming, and you guys know you come here for the truth out the hype. We gotta be honest about it here. Let's bring in Caroline Woods. Let's talk some tech. Let's talk some notes this morning. Joining us from New York uh, with uh, a couple bold downgrades here on a few favorites. Uh, Caroline, as KG was just telling us, looking for big tech to try and reassert some leadership this week. Downgrades on Palantir and Microsoft this morning from analysts. Not exactly the best start. Uh, let's go to Palantir first, just because that's been one of the few making highs breaking out. What's going on? Well, and that's exactly one of the reasons why Raymond James, this analyst over there, is downgrading shares, just saying basically the valuation is too rich. Should note that it's a, a kind of a milestone day for Palantir with it being added to the S&P 500, but not necessarily uh, kicking it off on an upbeat note with share. All right. So let's start right off the bat. They pretty much said the same exact thing that I said about the stock, uh, that it's overvalued right now. And probably you can make a case for significantly overvalued as we start getting closer to that $40 range. Now, not quite and nowhere near crazy. You should sell and, you know, run away or anything of that nature but we are definitely overvalued at this stage. So downgrading it based upon that shows you the difference between the way Wall Street thinks and the way a true long-term buy and hold investor thinks. I don't need to downgrade Palantir stock because it's a little bit overvalued right now. It's traded rich in the past. It's traded rich just this year and then fell back down to undervalued territory and then moved again. Obviously, if folks were watching the analyst and what they were saying and all that good stuff like that, they would have made decisions based upon that, which of course to me is a mistake because valuation is what matters. I'm not waiting on an upgrade or a downgrade in regards to what the analysts are saying. What the analyst, what this tells me, if it tells me anything really, is that they're just seeing the run starting to run out of steam. When it runs out of the steam, nobody knows, but they can give me some indication in terms of momentum. And they're basically telling me, okay, the run may be starting to run out of steam. Now, as a I'm not a long-term buy and hold investor, so I don't care. I'm not interested in the runs. Cool. I go and I focus other places and I buy other stocks. And then whenever they run, hey, seems like more times than not, a stock like Palantir will take a breather and then I'm able to add more shares at a much more reasonable price. But in regards to this downgrade right here, the logic behind it makes perfect sense to me, but how they choose to handle it and what their actions are behind it is completely different than mine is. So kind of keep that in mind as you're kind of thinking through this or you see downgrades and upgrades, honestly don't care. These guys were busy downgrading Palantir whenever I thought it was at an incredible price and vice versa. They were upgrading it whenever I felt it was overvalued in the past. So it's kind of all over the map here. Again, they're much more of an indication of something completely different than what you or I are actually looking for. It's off about four tenths of one percent. The Raymond James analysts downgraded shares to market perform from outperform without a price target. Still positive on the company, but basically as I said, valuation just too rich, saying while we remain optimistic about Palantir's longer term positioning in AI, we are downgrading our rating, given our view that shares need to consolidate stellar gains over the last couple of years and grow into its rich valuation. The analyst points out that shares were up uh, about about 20 percent in the past two weeks after S&P Dow Jones announced that it was going to be added at the time of the. Yep, there you go. You're, you're kind of seeing the uh, trade that we talked about that's going to take place with the upgrade and all that or excuse me, the inclusion in the S&P 500 there. Um, so they're basically telling you, hey, that trade's over with and we don't see anything else that's going to push the trade further. Now, keep in mind, I'm using the word trade very specifically because that's exactly what Wall Street does. They are traders. They're not looking to buy and hold long term or anything else like that. They're looking to trade the stock, get in and out of the stock. 
And so kind of keep that in mind as well as you're listening to these type things, because they're looking for the next catalyst for the trade and they don't see anything now that the S&P inclusion is over with. And remember, we talked about S&P inclusion in terms of it being an actual catalyst as a long-term buy and hold investor, not a trade catalyst. We absolutely agree. It is a trade catalyst, but as a long-term buy and hold investor, it doesn't add anything to EPS. It doesn't add anything to the valuation. Folks were still trying to argue with me down in the comment section about that one. I guess we'll just agree to disagree there, but I don't know. I don't know a single stock to where magically there's a market cap added to it because it's in the S&P. Just there's no mathematical way to get there in regards to it being added to the S&P or not. So to me, <laughs> there's nothing there, but all right. Others want to argue it. We'll just agree to disagree and kind of move on. No, also added that shares are up 120% year to date. That's more like 117% year to date right now. Sixfold over two years and says the stock's valuation has expanded fivefold, making it the richest software name, saying that leaves significant positive estimate revisions as the loan catalyst from here. So yeah, in terms of being the richest software name, it's not. Um, has it had maybe the biggest run? out of all the software companies. I don't know, I don't track every single software company out there. That's completely possible. But that also means it was stupid undervalued. I never make decisions based upon what, how much a stock is up. You know, a stock doubled up. Well, that's cool, but the stock may still be undervalued. Think about back in Meta in 2022, when it doubled up to 160, it was still significantly undervalued, but yet everybody's saying, ooh, it's doubled in the past year. Or actually it was faster than that. <laughs> ooh, it's doubled in six months or whatever the case was. Man, it may be getting a little bit overvalued there. No, it wasn't. Based upon every single valuation metric, it was still cheap and still a buy from that standpoint. But it shows you how Wall Street thinks because they're thinking like traders. They're thinking, wow, it's gone up fivefold in two years. It must be overvalued by now. Although it is a little bit overvalued, it's not crazy overvalued like they made it kind of seem and the way it kind of sounds there. So again, it's just a difference in language. And this is why ignoring the noise, like ignoring Wall Street altogether is so important because they're talking a different language for a different reason. Um, and it just doesn't mean the same exact thing as it does to me. I have seen stocks go for years being undervalued as it doubled up and tripled up and quadrupled up and 5X and eventually 10X. And it was still undervalued after that stage. It happens when a stock gets beaten down to undervalued so plaid, so beaten down by Wall Street that that's what you end up happening. And then of course, as it's running up on the back end and it's a quote unquote hot trade, all of a sudden they're crushing earnings, crushing earnings, crushing earnings over and over and over again. Kind of like what we saw with NVIDIA over the past, you know, two years or so. Same exact thing, but there was earnings there to back it up and continue to push that valuation further. And that right there is something similar I feel we're seeing in Palantir in regards to not the earnings performance that NVIDIA gave, but in regards to being so stupidly undervalued that it just made no sense the valuation with where it was at for so long that you ended up with this giant run up over the past year, year and a half or so. In terms of what other analysts are, are, are rating Palantir at, uh... Pretty, uh, they were already pretty cautious or more bearish. 42% uh, of analysts have a hold rating on shares. 32% have a sell rating. And then 26% have a buy rating. So pretty split uh, in terms of the analyst activity. Uh, but share Things I've never heard any of the greats of investing saying, not Warren Buffett, not Peter Lynch, or anybody else. Oh, gosh, man, those analysts, 42% of them are bearish or 52% of them are bullish or... Never, ever, ever, ever heard those words out of their mouths ever in regards to kind of understanding where I'm at there in the valuation cycle or anything else. Ignore that sort of stuff. I could care less how many buy ratings are on, how many sell ratings are on, or anything else of that nature. I can assure you, you will get burned following that stuff. Ask everybody who didn't buy Jack in 2022 because everything was downgraded in the worst ever and then wishing they would have bought in 2023. And then of course, as things kind of ebb and flow, always being behind the curve in regards to waiting on these analyst upgrades and downgrades. Ignore it completely. It means zero. Um, occasionally in my group, as we're talking, we're discussing something, someone's like, hey, this person upgraded or there's a whole lot of buy ratings or a whole lot of sell ratings. Could care less. Neither do any of the great investors that have ever lived care either. So kind of keep that in mind. It means zero, except for the momentum of what's happening right now has nothing to do with valuation or anything else of that nature. Even though they reference valuation in this particular downgrade, most of the time valuation is not the reason why it's happening. It's happening because there's another trade going on in the background and they're supporting that trade. Right now, only off about two tenths of 1%, still up about 18% in September alone. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess the valuation call shouldn't be too big of a surprise, kind of saying, uh, you know, maybe take a little profit and 
move on uh, after a unique breakout that uh, hasn't been answered by uh, really many of its peers? Some of the cyber trades are up near the highs that are doing okay. You know, it's definitely a sector within tech that is doing uh, uh, uniquely well. Uh, but I can definitely kind of see at this point where, you know, if you've had a buy rating or you've been bullish on this to maybe say, okay, uh, back down to more of a neutral, you know, that's the type of thing that is like as good of a downgrade as you can get, I guess. Yeah, I mean, not going all out bearish, but exactly. yeah, just moving to the sidelines with the, not a lot of catalysts for upside, okay. according to that analyst. And, right. you know, obviously other analysts were all already more cautious, some bearish. So it's not like uh, this analyst is, you know, in the minority. Yeah, okay. Uh, Rich. Yeah, Palantir is not popular among the Wall Street crowd still, despite this run. Still not a popular name out there. Uh, again, who freaking cares? It means nothing over the long run. Lots of stocks are not popular among analysts. There's great stocks out there that are still not popular uh, among the analysts and just kind of is what it is. Alex isn't going to play their game <laughs> per se. Uh, likes to poke them a whole heck of a lot. And that's just kind of what happens there in regards to performance and being the company that everybody wants to be a part of. They're begrudgingly buying the stock regardless, clearly. Otherwise, we wouldn't see this sort of run. Valuation, to say the least. Fair enough. Uh, Palantir, you know, 100 times uh, forward earnings uh, plus. So uh, totally get where they're coming from. All right, we'll go ahead and stop the video right there. Um, in regards to it being rich right now, yes, it is trading rich. We've talked about that before. Um, you get up over $30 per share right now, given where they're at, given the guidance that's there and everything else from a valuation perspective, it's overvalued. We are pulling starting to pull some of next year's gains into this year. That happens all the time when a stock gets hot. This is not a 2021 situation where we were, uh, you know, over $40 per share. And of course, that was 2021. Palantir was not nearly as good of a company. It was a great company, a lot of potential, but was not giving you the earnings performance that they're giving you right now. So it's a much better company right around that same exact price, but still overvalued from a valuation perspective there. And you've got to keep that in mind. If you're DCAing, just continue to DCA. That's the whole point of DCA. So that way you don't have to guess. You don't have to do anything else. If you're thinking about playing these trading games with Palantir, I've watched people repeatedly in the comment section and other places get burned by this. The right time to take your profits on Palantir originally was 15 bucks, you know, last year. Well, good luck. You got crushed if you did that. Um, I saw it as recently as whenever it crossed over 30. Lots of folks, oh, I'm going to sell and I'm going to buy it back whenever it falls back down to 25, uh, back down to, you know, 23. Some people had some pretty um, aggressive uh, places where they felt like for sure it's guaranteed to fall there. And of course, it didn't actually fall there. It's actually done the exact opposite <laughs> and went from that 30 to 38. And that's why trading is so hard. So many people will watch a stock go up, go down, kind of think, gosh, maybe I should sell, maybe I shouldn't, I'm not real sure. And then of course the stock falls and they go, oh, I knew it, I should have done it. And they feel like they got a feel for it. My gut tells me this, whatever the case is, it's all garbage in the end. You will eventually get burned. I watched it again this time around. It got up over 30, people were selling, gonna easily be able to buy it 25, 23, whatever the case is. I can guarantee you every single one of those folks, if they want to own Palantir long-term, are feeling a lot of FOMO right now, are feeling like, my gosh, is it going to hit 40? What the heck is going on there? That is the problem with trading is it works until it doesn't. Because I would agree when it got up over 30, it was overvalued. It was. But in regards to how far can Wall Street push it? They can push it however the heck they want. Again, we got the 40 in 2021 with nothing in terms of earnings with not nearly as good of earnings as now. We got the 40. So is it possible that we get the 40 now with much better earnings? Absolutely it is. But I have no desire to sit here and try to figure out when to get in, when to get out, when are you going to re-enter? You know, if you got out at 30, now it's run up to 38. Where's your entry point now? I mean, do you get back in at 35, 32? If it even falls there, if it gets up over 40, now do you really feel a FOMO and buying at 40? I mean, where does that line draw? It's just as possible it falls down to 25 as it is. It just trades flat or right, you know, kind of range bound from, I don't know, we'll say 36 to, you know, 40 for the next uh, year. Just as possible. And at that stage, well, gosh, you sure are playing. Do I, don't I, I'm waiting on this, I'm waiting on that. It, it's just a game I don't want to play. Trading is a losing game in the end. Statistically, is proven to lose, so I don't want to do that. Now, in regards to this run, can it continue? The answer is yes, it absolutely can continue. I'm sure somebody can pull up a chart and show you exactly where this line is and that line is and where the technical traders are going to trade it and all that good stuff like that. I don't care about any of that. 
And as a long-term buy and hold investor, neither should you. If you feel like it's a bit, a bit hot right now and you do a modified DCA like I do, I backed off buying. That's okay. Not a big deal. I also have a full position. I don't need any more shares. I have tons of bonus shares too. I don't need any more bonus shares. But having said that, if Wall Street gets dumb and they decide to beat the stock down, I'm going to be a buyer again without hesitation unless something changes on earnings. And vice versa, whenever the stock goes on a great run, I get to just keep my feet up, relax, and focus on other buys. That's what happens when you are a prepared, prudent investor who takes advantage of every single opportunity, ignores the noise, ignores everything else, and just adds to great stocks whenever they get undervalued. You get the benefit of, while well, everybody else is trying to trade and figure out where to get in and get out and option this and all this other craziness, you could just kick your feet up and go, well, that's nice. I'm enjoying the run. How far is it going to go? Nobody knows. Anybody guessing is just simply pulling up a chart and drawing lines. Cool. Uh, not my game. <laughs> so that's the spot I want all of you guys to be in with all of your stocks as to where you have bought heavy when it's undervalued. Yes, that means you're going to be a loser in the short term, but you end up a big winner in the long term. And especially during times like this where everybody else is feeling FOMO, trying to figure out what to do. You don't have to do anything. You just get to sit back, smile, and enjoy the ride. And if you want to learn exactly how to do this intimately so you can kick your feet up and enjoy the run in Palantir too, see all my buy and sell alerts in real time, see my complete watch list complete with price targets, take five courses for free, use the stock analyzer tool for free, get your free coaching. Make sure you take advantage of the September stretch hell that's going on right now for just a week here, guys, where you get all that. Plus, you get access to me anytime you want. Jump on our live Q&As. Guys, there's so much involved in the group. Check out the pinned comment. Take advantage of the sale before the price goes back up. And click this video here if you're gonna see exactly what I'm buying in this market. And click here to see my exact plan for this market. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.